1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, though Jesus or through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare, excuse me, for this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Some versions may say, therefore, comfort one another with these words. But Paul is addressing the Christians in Corinth, or Christians in Thessalonica at this time. And because of their location, they would have been, uh, the people of the world would have been, they would have believed in the Greek gods, Greek mythologies, if you studied some of that. And they believed in the Greek gods, so after death, they believed in life after death. But they also believed that every spirit, when it died, it went to a place of the underworld, a place of Hades, I guess is what they would call it, um, a place that was joyless, gloomy, and they just existed there for eternity, drifting around. There was no hope. It was a, it was a bummer for them. And Paul's like, uh-uh, I don't want you to be uninformed on this. We have hope. Jesus died. Jesus rose again. We believe that, and because we believe that, God's going to bring with him all those who have died, and we are going to be reunited, those of us who are still alive. We're going to be reunited with these people uh, to meet the Lord together and be with them always. And he says to them, comfort one another with these words. Uh, not to be comforted. Don't be comforted by these words I'm telling you. He's telling you, you be the comforter. You go do this. Um, comfort your brothers. Comfort your sisters with these thoughts. And thinking about that, death is hard. It's not a pleasant thing. Um, it, for those that have been affected by it, for those of us that have been affected, yeah, all of us have been affected in some way uh, by death. I've been a part of the family here for almost 23 years. Uh, and in that time, we've lost a number of faithful Brothers and sisters, you know, recently Viola, a student of the word, very witty, but knew the word, and up to her old age was still active, uh, and participating in Bible classes and talking to others around her. Bill and Elise were great examples of a godly married couple who enjoyed each other, who loved each other. Um, Steve, if you guys walked in the door, you got a handshake from Steve. Steve gave handshake lessons to every single person, um, and I miss Steve for that because there's a lot of weak handshakes around here. Yeah, uh, just kidding. That uh, you know, people like Mel, people like Sean, uh, people like Elois. I had the opportunity to know Elois when I first moved here. Anita, uh, Ted, such a good friend, uh, the man of God, Pam, who, despite the struggles she had, you never know Pam had struggles because she was such a joy and uh, brought love to everybody around her. Ralph and Jean, um, I've talked to, uh, I've talked to him about it before. That I, my memory of Ralph is him getting up and leading songs, even though Ralph's memory was fading. He still led. He still got up and led in song. Um, it was a good example. I know there's others that I am forgetting that we've lost over the years, but all these people's passing affected the church here and affected the family um, that they were related to. And in thinking about comforting one another, there's more to comforting than just sitting down and putting your arm around and saying, well, it's okay. We'll see them again. There needs to be love, there needs to be patience, there needs to be care for that person as they grieve. In grieving the loss of a loved one, the one thing I want to leave us with is that we can't let the grief get to us to the point that it's going to cause us to doubt the hope that we have in God. We miss being with our loved ones right now. But we believe, as Paul said, we believe Jesus died, Jesus rose again. And because of that, God is going to, through him, is going to allow those who have died to come back. We are going to be reunited with them. Uh, that scene that Paul describes is amazing, and I can't even comprehend what that's going to look like beyond what his words say. Uh, but there is going to be a time of reuniting with us and them. And that, sh that thought of being reunited, that thought of the hope that we have because of Christ, because of what Christ did, 
it shouldn't be enough just to encourage us in the depths of the experience, but encourage us to be holy, for us to be faithful to the Lord in our time here, to have that great hope of resurrection. So if there's anybody here tonight uh, who doesn't have that hope, uh, who isn't in the Lord, I want to encourage you to take the opportunity to grab hold of that tonight. 